Whenever we hear a children's story of a small person with a pointy little hat, immediately the creature that comes to our mind is a gnome. This might be mainly because we grew up listening to so many stories that are tangled up with gnomes. Depending on which area are they are from, you might have heard of gnomes as innocent looking joyful little creatures, or as dark and angry little beings. However, one trait that is shared by all gnomes is that they wear beautiful pointy hats. Even though many cultures have adopted the concept of gnome, the creature was originally found in the Scandinavian legends. Nis, Nissen, Nains, Tonti, Dudger, Mano, are few of the many names used by different cultures to identify gnomes. The origin of gnomes has many variations. According to one of them, the gnomes inhabited Earth long before humans did. At the very beginning of time, all magical creatures lived in one realm called the Realm of Fae under the rule of Fae. Fae was also a magical creature that has power over nature. But gnomes were a notorious type, and to make things worse for the Fae, they too possessed power that is almost identical to them. This made it difficult for the Fae's to make the gnomes bow before their authority. They often played tricks and experiments on other magical creatures, making the rule of Fae a challenging one. What threatens Fae's more was, the gnomes had an ability to shapeshift. They could excellently mimic to the point, it was impossible to tell a transformed gnome from what they were impersonating. Gnomes were naturally small creatures, so they were unable to take the form of large beings. But they could easily impersonate small magical creatures like fairies, pixies, and even small insects. With this power, the uninvited gnomes started to intrude the most secret court meetings, threatening the rule of Fae extensively. So eventually, gnomes became a threat to the Fae rule, and so they allied with all the other magical creatures to get rid of gnomes. For many years the best hunters of the kingdom began to hunt the gnomes and they even got better at it. The realm of magic and beauty soon turned into chaos and destruction. So the loads of each magical species secretly met because no one could see an end to the war. Because the main threat to Fae Kingdom was gnomes' ability to shapeshift, the lords decided to make the gnomes forget this capability by casting a powerful ritual. The gnome lords that took part in the ritual were elevated to the state of gods and they vowed to keep the power a secret from the rest of the gnomes. The gnomes that have no memory of their capabilities were sent to the human realm, since the realm of Fae could help them remember what they've lost. After going through a powerful ritual, the gnomes had the ability to absorb many traces of powers that were found in the new realm they were cast into, as a side effect of the performed ritual. This exposure gave birth to different types of gnomes, depending on the energy and power they absorbed. Forest gnomes, garden gnomes, dune gnomes, house gnomes, farm gnomes, Siberian gnomes, mining gnomes are some of them. What most of us are familiar with is the garden gnome. Forest gnomes are the most common type. They help the forest to grow and keep the animals in the forest safe, especially from humans. They heal the wounded animals and nourish the plants that are dried up with their magical powers. These gnomes avoid to interfere with humans. It is claimed that one can actually sense the presence of gnomes in a forest. If the forest seemed overly nourished, magical and beautiful, that is because of the work of forest gnomes. Garden gnomes, as the name suggests, helps to build up gardens, and that is why the statues are often found around gardens. When such statues are kept, the gnomes could easily hide behind them or freeze themselves as a statue when they come across humans. The more help you get from gnomes, the more beautiful your garden becomes. 
These gnomes especially like storytelling. They come out from their hiding places at night and run around the garden, nourishing every plant. Dew gnomes are slightly larger than other gnomes and they are the largest race of gnomes. But unlike other gnomes, these gnomes wear shabby clothes and looks more like peasants. But that doesn't make them peasants, since they too are gifted with powers to nourish the nature. House gnomes are found around houses. They live in the basement, if the house has one. They are the type of gnomes that are mostly associated with humans. They help humans to build broken things. If you find some broken equipment suddenly working, or an equipment working for ages just as new, you probably might be getting some help from house gnomes. They also whisper ideas on how to rebuild broken things when you are asleep. So when you get ideas in your sleep, that might be because a house gnome whispered an idea to you. The king of gnomes is normally chosen from this clan. House gnomes can speak, read and write the human tongue. Farm gnomes help farmers in their cultivation. It could be said that they inherit traces from both the garden gnomes and house gnomes. Just like garden gnomes, the farmer gnomes helps for the plants to grow, and just like house gnomes, they live among humans, especially in barns and such. Siberian gnomes are the nastiest type of gnomes. They are a hybrid of gnomes and trolls, who are also a magical creature just like gnomes, but has a nasty temper. Often if you encounter with a troll, it normally doesn't end well for you. So this hybrid gnomes are believed inherit this temper from the trolls. They could be angered easily and loves to take revenge. If humans anger a Siberian gnome, they will destroy all the crops and gardens of them. And they make sure these lands continue to be infertile. The mining gnomes are the ones who mine the ground for treasure. They are well aware of valuable minerals and stones underground and can easily move under the ground just as we move in air. They love gems and jewelry and are considered by many to be the best gem cutters and jewelers in existence. Some legends claim that these gnomes collect these precious stones and hide them in a chest. They hand these treasures to those who prove their worth by showing their respect to them. But there is a lot of argument around this, since treasure is commonly associated with leprechauns. Leprechauns and gnomes share a lot in common, such as the physical appearance and powers. But leprechauns are part of Irish folklore, while gnomes are found in Scandinavian legends. Even though some legends claim that gnomes have a treasure that they are protecting, they are much gentler than leprechauns. They don't have an obligation to anyone who captures them like leprechauns do. Because gnomes are so much associated with nature, they are often referred to as earthly spirits. They are aware of all the medical properties of plants, making them one of the most talented group of doctors. There is no illness they can't cure. Gnomes are very strong. Regardless of their small bodies, gnomes have the strength of seven men and can run very fast. That's not all. Gnomes are said to have excellent vision, just as good as a falcon. Gnomes have the gift of telepathy, which enables them to communicate with each other over vast distances. There are some who believe gnomes to be only males. They claim that gnomes are not born, but are carved from stone by elder gnomes. When Wimir, the prime Val being died to give birth to the entire existence, gnomes were born from the worms that emerged from Wimir's body. Gods who saw these worms gave them a humanoid body and mind. They were also gifted with divine powers. These elder gnomes then carved themselves on rocks and breathed them life, using their divine gifts. Others say that there are female gnomes as well. But regardless of how they are born, they all agree that gnomes has a long lifespan. They can live up to 400 years. 
The female starts to give birth when they are around 120 years. It's very hard for a female gnome to conceive with their offspring. But when they do, they always give birth to twins. Gnomes mostly live a vegetarian lifestyle, feeding mostly on nuts, fruits and plants. They sometimes feed on milk and eggs as well. But these comes from the animals who offer these as gratitude for looking after them. Gnomes tend to live on their childish spirits until they are very old. For the most part, gnomes are very friendly beings, both to the nature and to the humans. Unless they are angered, gnomes will continue to bring prosperity. What do you think of this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please consider to subscribe, like, comment and share this video. My Patreon and subscribers, thank you so much for your amazing support. I hope to see you again in another story to tell.